Hi, I'm Desiree here at God Chasers Community Church. Today's series title was All In. Press through any struggle that you have, whatever that may be, because God works for you in high places and low places. What are you sacrificing for him? What are you giving up for him? If this message has blessed you in any way, follow us on Facebook or Twitter at God Chasers. And you can download the app on Android or iOS and give financially. in this place. Yeah. Lord, let us go all in for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Shake two or three people's hands and say, I'm all in. I'm all in. Now do me a favor and shake the person that you skipped on purpose. Shake their hand and say, but I got an issue. <laughs> say, I got an issue. I got an issue. I got an issue. I, I'm grateful for each and every father in here. Thank you guys for being here on Father's Day. I know you wanted to kick your feet up, eat some barbecue or something. And then it rained, so you said, well, I may as well go to church. <laughs> but no, I'm grateful for each and every father in here. And um, I, I had the perfect Father's Day message. I was ready. I was going to preach a message about how Jesus was our father and he, he sacrificed. He went all in. And because of that sacrifice, that we can be fathers. We can sacrifice for our children. And, and I was ready. I was on it. I was telling Kevin about it on, on Thursday. Was that Thursday? I'm, I'm ready. I'm about, to, I'm about to tie it up. And then just later on that night, God took my notes and he was like, I'm not sure what to do with that. Sorry. That's exactly what God said. That's exactly what, what a coinky did. That's exactly what he said. And he just put the magic eraser to my notes. And he said, that's great, that's wonderful, but he said, you, uh, you're missing somebody. He said, and I can't let you finish this series because you're missing somebody. Come on, come on. And he took me to this lady. And I said, God, I don't want to preach about a lady on Father's Day. Come on. Can I keep it 100 with y'all? I said, I don't want to preach about, I need to preach about a man. I need to preach about Gideon or Joshua. Somebody tough that don't shave. <laughs> Wilderness man. <laughs> and God said, no, 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 no. I got I gotta make a point. Oh, but he, he said, because some men are gonna come in that building with an issue. Oh. He said, there's gonna be some people who came in that building, and even though it's Father's Day, they have an issue. Right, that's uh, good. They, they've been dealing with an issue for years and years and years, and they have an issue. He said, and I need to talk to some people who have an issue. Wow. So do me a favor and just high five one more person and say, I got an issue. I'm in the right place because I got an issue. I came to the right place because I got an issue. And and and, and I said before, I, I you don't come to church because you are fixed, you come to church to be fixed. You don't come to church because I don't come here, you know, somebody say, I gotta, I gotta get myself together so I can go to church. No, 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 you come to church so that God can get you together. I came here broken. I came here messed up. But the, I came to Jesus just as I was, and God did the work. See, 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 a lot of times we think we can do the work. Right, right. So we come to a place and we say, I'm going to do the work. I'm going to do everything. And as men, we do this all the time. We can fix it all the time. You know, that's why ladies, <laughs> let me help y'all out for a second. You know, you go to your husband and you, you just want to talk. But he's going to try to fix <laughs> whatever you tell him. That's our job. So if you go and you say, I'm having all these problems with the kids, blah, 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 and this and this and that. He's going to say, well, you should do this and this and that. Uh -huh. Now, fellas, she really don't want you to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> she just wants you to listen. Right. Yeah. I think the best, the best statement I ever learned in my marriage was, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Really? Oh, that's so crazy. She did what? Shoot, I can, I'm a master of that. Till she asked a question, she's like, you know, she's like, you know what I'm saying? She did what? 
You're not even paying attention to me. I just put the wrong phrase right there. I meant to say, mm-hmm. <laughs> but she wants me to listen. She don't want me to fix it. But I came to Jesus because Jesus is a fixer. I can't, oh man, I'm just looking for one or two people. Before I get deep into it, I'm looking for one or two people who know that Jesus is a fixer. And when I came to Jesus, I was broken. I wasn't running right. I wasn't living right. But when I came to him, I didn't fix it. He fixed it. I didn't change my life. I didn't do a 12-step program. When I came to Jesus, he fixed it. In fact, I didn't do 12 steps. I only did one step because all I needed was one step because Jesus is a fixer. And if there was just two people on your road that could stand up right now and let you know what they went through, let you know that Jesus brought them out and fixed them up. <laughs> They might turn to you and say, I don't look like what I've been through. I don't look, I look better than what I've been through. If you knew my story, you'd be like, ooh, you look good. I look good. Look at somebody and just say, ooh, you look good. <laughs> because you don't look like what you've been through. So, so we have this Jesus, we have Jesus, and he's been doing miracles now, right? He's been doing miracles all over the place. He's not, he's no longer the new kid on the block. He's been doing miracle after miracle after miracle. And, 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 and what would happen was whenever the miracle start coming, the crowd comes with it. Yeah. Whenever the miracle comes, the crowd comes with it. The crowd's gonna always come with the miracle. That's why when you're in a high place, it's a whole lot of people around. But when you get in a low place, yeah. okay. Okay. And, and, I, and I tell our team, I tell our, 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 our ministers all the time, the same crowd that crowns you one week will crucify you the next week. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm really nervous about the crowd. I don't, I don't know the motivation of the crowd. So I, 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 I walk slow when the crowd's around. And so Jesus is, 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 is walking to a place to help a man named Jairus. Jairus comes to Jesus and he says, my daughter is sick. My daughter is sick, and in fact, she's dead. It, wow, it, she, wow, she's wow. dead. Uh, in, in some, in some, uh, in, in some translations, it says she's sick and dying. In another translation, she's already dead. But it doesn't matter what your condition, whether you're just sick or you're already dead. Jesus is a fixer. He'll fix it for you. And so he says, he says, my daughter is sick and she's dying. And and and. I need you to come heal her. The Bible says he threw himself at the feet of Jesus. And he said, my daughter is sick and she's dying. I need you to come heal her. And Jesus said, okay, where is she? Where's she at? Where's she at? Let's go. And the Bible says he got up and he went with Jairus. And all the disciples went too. All the disciples went too. See, when Jesus moved, you got to move. That's a whole other a whole other sermon. Some of y'all are in the same place when God already moved from that place. Um, that's why you don't have healing because God moved from that place already and you stayed there. Oh, you're, still in that, you're still stuck in the place and God already said, let's go. He said, go away from me. Remember you told Abraham, pick up all your stuff. Let's go. We're going somewhere. But you get stuck in a place. You get stuck in a place and I heard a counselor say, he said, when you a lot of times when you get hurt, you stop growing. So you are the same age in your maturity that you were when you got hurt. Somebody hurt you when you were 10. And in your spirit, you're still 10. You never grew past that hurt. You got to find a place of maturity in God that says, I'm going to grow past this. In fact, touch yourself right now. I haven't even got to my message, but touch yourself right now and say, I'm going to grow past this. I'm going to grow past this. I'm not going to be stuck right here anymore. I'm going to release them. I'm going to let them go. And hopefully they let me go because I'm going to move on in Jesus' name. Amen. So, 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 Jesus is going to deal with Jairus' daughter. And how many of you know that sometimes Jesus... <laughs> it seems like Jesus is not going to fix your problem. That's good. He's yeah. going to fix everybody else's problem. Yeah. Sometimes it's not but I have an issue. Mm. I got but I have an issue. Uh -huh. 
Jesus is going all around. He's healing people. He's bringing blind people back. And then for some reason, he keeps walking past me. Oh. While on others that are calling, mm. do not pass me by. I'm calling you Savior, yeah. Savior, Savior. Yeah. Hear my humble cry. Yeah. While on others that are calling, do not. It seems like everybody getting blessed. Everybody's getting calls. Everybody's getting houses. I'm barely trying to put this thing together. I barely got enough. But I don't understand what's going on. And I see you going to heal Jay Iris' daughter, but I, I have an issue. Touch somebody else and say, I've got an issue. I got an issue. And so I, I, it's been bothering me for years and years. I haven't been able to get over it. The Bible says she went to go see a phys she went to go see physician after physician after physician. How many of you go to your Facebook physician? Whenever you have an issue, you go right to the you put your issue on social media, and then we got a whole bunch of Facebook physicians. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Phil, F-E-E-L. <laughs> we got a lot of like we got a lot of social media physicians, and they'll prescribe to you a lot of messages, girl. You need to leave him. Girl, I would take that if I was you. She been with the same anyway. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't go through that if I was you. And, and, and at some point, I, I'm good with your advice. Thank you so much. I love you, but I need to see somebody greater. I've tried all your advice. I've tried the way you said to do it. I've done it that way. In fact, I've done it that way for 12 long years. But I, I, I need something greater. I need something greater. There's something greater for me. And there, I know there's a crowd around it. And I know it's, it's something around it. And so I got to press toward it. But there's something greater for me. It, it, there's got to be something in your heart that says, even though I, I, I've seen every physician, I've done every doctor, I've tried everything on my own, there is something greater for me. And I'm going to have to press through the crowd. I'm going to have to press through the naysayers. I'm going to have to press through the people who, do, who don't mean any good for me because I got to get right, right. to God. But God didn't create with his hands. He created with his words. And a lot of times your words your world is the reflection of your words. Oh, man. It, it, somebody should have wrote that down. Your, your world is a reflection of your words. And you keep wondering why your world looks like this, but it's a reflection of the words you speak. It's a reflection of the, of the things you say. It's the reflection of the things that you repeat about yourself over and over. For some of y'all, it's a reflection of the music you listen to. Because you say it out loud. Yeah. And whatever you say out loud, you bring to life. Yeah. You bring to life when you yeah. say it out loud. So you say it about yourself. Yeah. I smoke. I drink. <laughs> I'm supposed to stop, but I can't. <laughs> and 10 years later, you're like, I'm supposed to stop, but I can't. You spoke it. You said it over and over and over and over. So I, I don't want to stand on my music so much, but ladies, some of this music, you and you talking about, they talking about somebody else now, sweetheart. They talking about you. And you saying it yeah. about yourself. All right. Anyway, but your words bring your world. And so what you got to do in the, in the, in the beginning of a thing, in the inception of a thing, is you got to speak to that thing. Amen. When you are in the inception of a thing, when you're at the beginning of a thing, you have to speak Amen. to that thing. What have you spoken to today? Uh, what have you spoken to? Have you spoken to your finances, uh, saying, I'm the head and not the tail, I'm a boy and not the me, I'm a lender and not a borrower, and listen, checkbook, it's the time for you to come in line right now. Checkbook, listen, bank account, it's time for you to come in line. Credit card I'll go down in Jesus' name right now. Down, down. Yes, It'll work eventually. Yeah. It's a spiritual thing. Yeah. Dr. Delta said, I said they'd go down, and it didn't go down. You didn't pay the bill. You got to pay the bill. Start going down in Jesus' name. Stop using the car. Stop paying the bill down in Jesus' name. Anyway. But it's about what 
what you speak to. It's about what you speak to. It's about what you speak to. I don't like my lips. I don't like my hair. I don't like this. I don't like that. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. My, my. Ain't no job I want to apply for. Yeah. This to be president of the company? Okay. <laughs> I mean, you know, I presided over some things. <laughs> I presided over some things. I could be the president. Because you got to be able to speak to some things and then that'll lift your spirit up to a different place. And so she said to herself, said to herself, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. Now, now listen, listen. listen. I, I want to just deal with something real quick. The hem, the hem, the hem, the hem. A lot of us want to touch the head. But if, 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 we, if we stop worrying about headship and start worrying about hemship, we might be a little better off. We might find our healing yeah, yeah, yeah. If I stop focusing on headship right. Right. and start focusing on himship, how am I serving? Right. How's my heart? What's right. the condition like? Do I deserve to be oh, himship? Amen. Okay, that was for the church people. If you're here to visit, that wasn't for you. That's for you. Okay. All right. So, so she said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know I can be made whole. Made whole. Some of us are, are, are fragments of ourselves because of all the people that you let take from you in your life. Parts of us gone. Parts of, see, you give somebody a piece of your heart and they do something wrong. They take it and you lost it. So you're a fraction of yourself. Whoa. You give somebody a, a piece of your heart. You give them a relationship. You give them a key to your heart, and now you're a fraction of yourself. Some of y'all have fathers who took a piece of you, never came back, never showed back up. It's a piece of you that's gone. And the Bible says that you can be made whole on today. She said, she said, if I could just touch the hem, if I could just touch the hem, come, come, who's up here? Kevin, come here real quick, come around here. If I could just touch the hem, see, uh, I'm gonna have to take off the jacket, I need to make something make sense to y'all. See, a lot of times we think that we can get to Jesus for Jesus to touch us. And I, I, I don't have any problem with people who Jesus touched, but I want to be one of those people who can touch Jesus. Come back here, Kevin. Come back here. I want to be one of those people who can touch Jesus. Stand on that X for me. I want to be one of those people who can touch Jesus. And a lot of times, there's a lot of noise around. There's a lot of voices around. There's a whole bunch of stuff in the crowd. And so I have to find my way to Jesus. So the Bible says she pressed through the crowd. But if you really look up that word press, it wasn't from this position. It was from this position. I got to see Jesus. I got to do more than see him though. I got to touch him. And he can't just touch me. I got to touch him. I got to, but at first I got to crawl. I got to crawl to Jesus. I got to get there. No matter what happens, no matter what I went through with my divorcee, no matter what I went through with my kids, no matter what I went through through my circumstances, I got to get to Jesus. I have to touch him even if I have to crawl to him. And a lot of times God is saying, hey, I just need to know how low you can go. I need you to do a spiritual limbo. I need to see how low you can go because I want to take you high, but in the kingdom, low means high. In the kingdom, if you can get low, I'll take you high. He says, I take the low things of the world and I put them on top and I take the high things of the world and I bring them down. He said, I'm the God who picks one up and puts one down. But how many of you are in the position to crawl to Jesus? No matter what I'm going through, I'm going to get there. I've been dealing with this issue. I've been dealing with this issue. I haven't been a great father. I haven't been a great parent. I haven't been a great mother. But I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get to Jesus. 
I haven't done it all right. I had a baby real early and it messed some things up, but I'm trying to get to Jesus. I'm not the best mother. In fact, sometimes I, I, I'm scared because I don't even want this baby, but I'm trying to get to Jesus. I thought I was dealing with some real people in here. You gotta press your way through the crowd. You gotta press your way through the foolishness and the nonsense. You gotta have a silent time, a private time. You gotta get down on your knees. Now get this, get this. As I'm calling to Jesus, I'm taking the position of prayer. Sometimes the only difference between you being blessed and you being cursed is this to this. <laughs> the only difference between you being blessed and you being cursed is this to this. So I get down on my knees and then uh, I was reading, I was doing a little research, God. I, I just want to tell y'all this real quick. I was doing a little research and I found out that in, in, in ancient times when they were going to birth something, they didn't lay on their back. They got down like this because I'm about to birth something. Something's alive on the inside of me. And I know if I could just get to Jesus, that thing that's on the inside of me, I'll birth that thing on the inside of me. But I, I'm in the wrong position. I'm in a position laid back saying, God, come touch me when I need to be in a position that says, God, I need to get to you. I need to find you. Whatever I got to do, whoever I got to press through, I got to get to you. I got to get to you. Because I want to touch Jesus. Thank you, Kevin. Because I want to touch Jesus. I know a lot of people been touched by Jesus. He, he can touch whoever he want. He, he can touch whoever he want. But, but what about the person who says, I want to touch Jesus. I want to touch Jesus with my prayer life. I want to touch Jesus in the way I love my family. I want to touch Jesus in the way I love my kids. I want to touch Jesus in my finances. I've tried everything else. Now it's time for me to go all in because I want to touch Jesus. We keep looking for Jesus in our life, in our relationships, in our families, in our finances. But God's saying, you haven't touched me. You haven't touched me. I need you to touch me. I need you to touch me after she reached out and she touched Jesus. And the Bible says immediately, immediately she was healed. Immediately that old thing was fixed. Immediately whatever I was going through is better. Immediately it haven't all worked out, but I feel it fixed in my spirit. I haven't seen the fruit of it yet, but I can feel inside my body. The, the Bible says she felt it in her spirit that she was fixed. She didn't have to check. She felt it in her spirit. Some of y'all need to know, you, you, you need to make sure you tell somebody, don't, don't look at where I am right now. I feel it in my spirit, I'm fixed. I feel it in my spirit, I'm whole. I feel it in my spirit, I'm better. I, I can't explain it to you right now. And I know the test haven't came through and you haven't seen the fruit of it yet, but I'm fixed in my spirit because I touched Jesus. Does anybody want to touch Jesus in here today? Jesus is on his way to heal somebody else. Yeah. But since I touched him, he healed me. Yeah. He's on his way to fix another problem, but I touched him. I touched him with my worship. I touched him. I reached out to him. I laid prostrate on the ground when my family didn't understand when my son was like, what's wrong with daddy? I'm laying flat on the ground because Amen. I got to touch Jesus. Amen. Amen. When they come into my room and I'm praying and I'm on my knees now, they already know they don't have to say anything. They just turn off the light and close the door back because they know I'm trying to touch, touch. Jesus. It's not a strange thing to see me on my knees. And men, it shouldn't be a strange thing for your children to see you on your knees at your house. It should become commonplace that they see you on your knees. Because, uh, get this, because the only way they'll know to go down on their knees is because they saw you go down on your knees. And if you can figure out how to fix your life, how to get it together, how to get to a place where you can touch Jesus, then they'll figure out how they can touch Jesus. The Bible says, train up a child in the way that he shall go. And when he gets old, he won't depart from that way. Something will happen when he's 25, when he's 27, 
when he's 32 and he's in a bad situation, he'll say, wait, 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 I, 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 I saw my dad go through this once. I saw my mama go through this once. And I, I, I don't really know how it worked out, but I remember she got on her knees. I remember she crawled. I remember he crawled to touch Jesus. I remember the posture of birthing for my life. Yeah. It's on my knees. Yeah. It's on my knees. Yeah. Praying to something greater than me. Amen. Yeah. Believing in something greater than me. Listen, man, I, I know. Yeah. I know, man. I know. I know, man. I know. I know they raise you to be tough. They raise you. They tell you you got it figured out. You got it on your own. All you got to do is get it. I'm riding around. I'm getting it. It's mine. I'm spending it. Y'all, y'all. Make it play. And they teach you that. But there's something greater. Yeah. There's something greater than you, man. There's something bigger than you. There's something on the other side of this. And listen, it's and it's more important than you. Yeah. Yeah. It's about your family. Yeah. It's about your children. It's about legacy. Yeah. It's more important than you. Yeah. Finally, Jesus turns around and he says, somebody touch me. And the disciples said, man, what are you talking about? It's a crowd of people around you. It's, all, it's thousands of people here. What are you talking about? Everybody touch you. They said, no. He said, no, everybody right. didn't touch me. Right. <laughs> Everybody's not going to be able to touch him. Everybody's not going to be, it might be a whole big crowd around. There might be a whole lot of people around Jesus, but everybody's not touching him. There might be a big crowd where you are. You might go to a church where there's 10,000 people, but I guarantee you, everybody's not touching him. And if it's just me, if I, can, if I gotta be the only one down on my knees, crawling to Jesus, I gotta be the one that touches him. I'm gonna touch him with my life. I'm gonna touch him with the way I raise my kids. I'm gonna touch him with the way I love him with my wife. I'm gonna touch Jesus, I'm going to touch him with my finances. I'm going to touch him in my relationships. I'm going to touch him with my friends. They're going to see some. They're going to see me and say, that man knows Jesus. That man has touched Jesus. There's a lot of people around. A lot of people around. A lot of people talking big talk. Can you touch Jesus? Can you touch Jesus? He said, yeah, they all their hands on me, but nobody touched me. Yeah. Only one of them touched me. And he said, look, he, she drew virtue from me. Yeah. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Yeah. And we take that, oh, man, I gotta be finished. Go we take that in a negative connotation. He drew virtue. She drew virtue from me like Jesus lost something. No, she gained something. <laughs> Jesus didn't lose anything. She, paid, he, he, she took a withdrawal of virtue. And I I just want to know if there's one person in here who wants to reach into the bank account of Jesus and take a withdrawal. If somebody wants to reach into the bank account of Jesus and draw something out, I, I'm, I've depleted myself. I've depleted my funds. My funds are depleted. It's non-sufficient funds in here. But if I could just access the bank account of Jesus, I can make a withdrawal of virtue. I can make a withdrawal of peace. I can make a withdrawal of my heart. I can make a withdrawal. Because I got an issue. I got an issue. I got an issue. I can't fix it. I've tried to have I can't fix it. I've tried on my own. I've tried to stop. Right. I got an issue. And there's not enough in my bank. I've depleted everything in my bank. So I need to withdraw from your bank, God. I need to withdraw from your bank, God. I need to withdraw from your old taste and see that the Lord is good. I need to withdraw from your bank. God. There's something you have that I need. He said, he said she drew virtue from me. He said, come here, daughter. Come here. The Bible says she was scared and nervous. She went over to him, broken, battered, messed up, but healed in her heart. Amen. <laughs> 
healed in her spirit. Yes. She said, yes, Lord. She said, I, I knew that if I could just touch you. That's it. That's it. That's it. Come on. That's I, I, it. I don't know how you're going to fix it. That's it. I'm going to do it, God, but if I, I could just know. touch you. I don't know what's on the other side for me, God, but if I could just touch you. I'm not perfect. I don't have it all together. I'm not the best dad, but I, I, I just want to touch you. She said, if I knew if I could just touch you, I would be made whole. He said this, oh my God. He said, daughter, your faith made you all. He said, he said, it was nothing else. It was your faith. It was your faith. It was your faith. It's because you believe. The Bible said Abraham believed and it was accounted to him for righteous so he didn't have to be righteous. He didn't have to have it all together but because he believed and because he stretched and because he crawled, your faith has made you whole. You could have messed up all your life. Right, right. Touch Jesus. Amen. Your faith will make you whole. Reach out for the Father right now. Your faith will make you whole. You could have been the worst dad that dad could ever be. You could be the worst mom that dad ever had. You could have had the worst dad that there ever was in the history of dads. But if you can touch Jesus, Come on now. he said, your faith, your faith, your faith. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than I could ever ask to think. According to the power that works in me. <laughs> Woo, come on, say the word. Yes. Say the word. It's your faith. There you go. Would you make a withdrawal yeah, yeah, from God yeah, today? Yeah, 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 yeah. Would you make a withdrawal from the bank of God today? With every head bowed and every eye closed. Now I know there's somebody in here today who doesn't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. They, they don't know Jesus. They, he's just somebody walking in the crowd and there's people all around and they know all these things to say. There's church of these. They can speak it. They know how to say it. They know how to sound spiritual. And I don't know none of that. But I want to touch Jesus. If that's you today, I want to say a prayer. I want to say a simple prayer for you and listen. We're going to say this prayer, and I know some of you guys have used to it. You're like, nah, I know this prayer. I know it by heart. I've said it a million times, but mean it this time. Amen. Mean it this time. Mean it in your heart. Thank you, Lord. Make a withdrawal from Jesus today. Really touch him when you say it. We're going to say this prayer, and, 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 and after we say this prayer, I'm, I'm going to ask you to take one more step of faith. It, 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 we're not going to bug you or, or, or try to pry something from you, but we just want to love on you. So, so we're going to say a simple prayer, and it goes like this. Just say, Father, in the name of Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins. Come into my heart. Change my heart, God. Come into my life. Make me new, God. Lord, I want to withdraw from you. I want to withdraw from your bank account, Lord Jesus. I've depleted mine. I've tried everything. I've gone everywhere. I've asked for advice, God, but I want to see you, Jesus, and I want to touch you, God. I want to touch you, God. I want to touch you, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, if that was you, if that was you and you said that prayer or you and you... You said it for the first time or you meant it for the first time. I want you to do me a favor. I'm going to count to three. And if that was you, I want you to raise your hand as high as you can raise it. You ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Raise your hand as high as you can raise it. If you said it or meant it for the first time, raise your hand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can I get the ministers to pray? If you said it or meant it for the first time, somebody is coming to pray with you right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. And do me a favor and give God the best praise you can give him right now. The Bible says there is rejoicing in heaven. There is rejoicing in heaven. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, listen, uh, this next prayer is just for 
of those who feel like you. Yes, feel like they tried everything. Now, I, Jesus, I know you. I, I know you. I know you in the power of your resurrection. I know you in the fellowship of your suffering, God. But I've tried everything and I have an issue, God. I have an issue, God, and I need you to fix it, God. I need you to heal me, God. If that's you right there, I want you to do me a favor with every head still bowed and every eye still closed. Every head still bowed and every eye still closed. Just do me a favor and just say, God, fix it, Lord. Fix it, God. Fix it, God. I don't know what else to do. I've tried everything else, God, but I need you to fix it, God. So I'm calling out to you. In fact, I'm reaching out to you. No, no, God, I'm crawling to you because I need you to fix my issue. I have an issue, God. I have an issue with sex. I have an issue with women. I have an issue with drugs. I have an issue with bad relationships. I'm not a good friend, so I haven't had a lot of good friends, Lord Jesus. But if I could just reach out to you, Lord Jesus, if I could just touch the hem of your garment, I know I can be whole. Say this, I know I can be whole. I know I can be whole. In Jesus' name. Now you just believe it. I'm whole. I'm whole right now. I haven't seen the fruit yet, but I'm whole. I haven't, it hasn't all turned around, but I'm whole. I don't know what my bank account looks like. I haven't checked it, but I'm whole. <laughs> I don't know where my I don't know where my children are right now, but I believe I, I'll reach out to them because I'm whole. I'm whole. Lastly. If you heard the word of God on today and you want to be a member of God Chases Church, you said, I, 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 I played the game, I visited churches after churches after churches, but I've come here and I, I heard something from God. I heard God speak to me and I feel connected here. I feel connected to the word that comes from this place. I feel connected to the spirit that comes from this place. If that's you, I want you to do me a favor. And after the service, after the service, I want you to meet me and my wife right over here, right over in this place. If that's you, if you said, I, I, I decided I want to be a part of something. I'm tired of running from things. I want to be connected to a thing. Meet me and my wife right over here. Let's all give the Lord a hand praise in Jesus' name. Come on, come on. Y'all can do better than that. Has God been good to you? Has God been good to you? Come on. Is somebody in here willing to lift their voice and just say, we cry? Oh! Yeah. <laughs>